Hey, Kendall, good to see you. Now, you are reddish. I was very red. You, I, I, mean, I was very ginger as a child. And then, of yeah. course, as you get older, it fades a bit. But I think you always stay red inside. If you've been ginger as a kid and you've gone through school for 20 years, you're always ginger, whether oh. you lose it or it goes grey or, you know. So what was school like for you? Um, there was a little bit of bullying. I mean, I was lanky, I was spotty, and I was ginger. So there was a very broad canvas my bullies could sort of pick to, to, to sort of rile me on. I mean, it was pretty unoriginal. It was carrot top, it was ginger top, it was ginger nuts, all that sort of stuff. So it, it was pretty usual. Um, there was a, a programme on in the mid-90s called Game On. And the, the main setup of that was it was two housemates, one of whom was a ginger geek and one of whom was the bullying housemate. And every Monday it would be it would be aired, and every Tuesday I would get sick the next day for whatever you know the guy I'd been bullied for. So I mean it was it, it was it was up and down. But I was at a Catholic boys' school with lots of Irish kids there, so we were actually we weren't so much of a minority there. So why do you think it is that people pick on ginger hair um, youngsters so much? Because you see, I think it's beautiful. I think ginger hair is absolutely beautiful. But, you know, so why do people pick on it? It's bizarre, isn't it? I think, it, well, we obviously have a, a, a strong Celtish, a Celt heritage in this, in this country, in, in, in the United Kingdom. And I think it's, it's funny that it happens here, but not abroad. Mm -hmm. You go abroad, and I've been abroad to sort of South American places, and people are sort of quite curious by it, and they quite like it. But it, it's quite common in the UK, and it's an obvious, it's an obvious difference. When you're a kid at school, okay, and you look at, you know, you're short, you're fat, you wear glasses, you're spot. It doesn't, it, it just happens if you're ginger. It's another thing to sort of, you know. And yet there's a sort of acceptance of it here, isn't there? And, and some people I know would argue, actually, or, or beg the question, is it any different to racial abuse? Well, I don't think there have been many kind of ginger hate crimes. We haven't been the victims of slavery or, two, or, um, or, or apartheid. I mean, I think we can, we can overplay this a little bit. I mean, obviously, it's tough. And the, and the story that you're talking mm. about this morning, this young chap, Tyler, mm. it's incredibly sad. And, and, and that isn't just name-calling. That is, that is sort of harassment and bullying. And he's gone through a horrific time. We clearly shouldn't underestimate the, the pain that him and his family have gone through. And it certainly sounds like the school... Uh, perhaps haven't dealt with it necessarily in the most effective way by removing him from the classroom. That's not dealing with bullying, that's removing the problem rather than sort of confronting it. Um, but I think it is a problem, but I think we just need a bit of civility and, and you know, we need to be sort of sensible about it. It doesn't help when people like the deputy leader of the Labour Party, if you recall a few months ago, uh, called Danny Alexander a ginger rodent. And the interesting thing was the media response was, was up in arms. Not that she called him a rodent, but that she called him ginger, which I thought was very amusing. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks very much, Steve. Yeah. And congratulations uh, on surviving it. <laughs> well, we'd love to hear from you, particularly if you're a redhead. Uh, and lots of ways you can contact us, Facebook, Twitter or email. And if you're 18 or over, you can text on 67890, test cost 25 pence for your standard network charge. Get your comments in, uh, of course, before 8 o'clock this morning. Had some already. We'll tell you about those a little bit later on.